Hey there, this is Ryan Hosapple on the campus of Huntington University. You're listening to Rooted, an in-depth conversation with interesting people and topics that matter to the Forrester family. Make sure you subscribe to Rooted on iTunes, Google Play, or Spotify. You can find us by searching Forrester Radio Rooted. Today, I'm joined by Daniel. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me. So, Daniel, why were you drawn to attend HU in the first place? So, HU, I was not anticipating coming here. I was going to visit another college up north, and I'd heard about the DMA student, uh, excuse me, the DMA program here. I'd heard it was very good. And so my dad was like, why don't we go visit? And I was like, sure, let's go visit here. And I came here for the tour. As I was walking through the campus, I just went to myself, I need to come here. I, I just need to come here. It was very cool. I looked around. It, it, it was like a DMA student's dream. <laughs> I walked into like all the, the, they had the screening room. They had all the rooms with all the gear in them. Don't even ask me the name of it. I still don't know the names of them all. It was fantastic. Just seeing all of this equipment and like seeing people who were truly like invested in wanting to make their students better people, uh, better at making film animations things because I'm a film student but the I'm pretty sure the experience for animation students is probably pretty similar they've had a good experience here with the teacher and the staff and the faculty and the equipment we have access to here as well was there anything specifically that you were drawn to in your first week while attending here uh so (laughs) one thing that was actually drawn to the first week here was the volleyball so the first weekend the or is the orientation week that's when you're getting to know the campus getting to know where to go who to go to if you need help with something, and getting to know people. So I never played a ton of volleyball. (laughs) I never played volleyball on a team, none of that stuff. And I was terrible when I first started, but it was a great community builder. You just got to meet all kinds of people. And it was just very cool. Uh, I actually met Ryan here running a 5K. I'd never run a 5K before, and I was bombed out by the end of it. It was, I was hurting all over and hurt for like a week, but it was well worth it. But I remember in particular the volleyball, just because it was so competitive. I mean, you get, what, a couple dozen guys out there playing volleyball. It's, it gets competitive, but you grow community as well, while also beating other guys at a game, which is awesome. So it's just fun that way. It's just fun. Yeah, volleyball is very fun, as well as beating you in the 5K was fun, too. Oh, shoot. No, I finished before you, man. No, you did not. <laughs> Okay, well, moving on. What did you think of the alpha groups that they had you attend in in the first couple weeks? I actually, frankly, don't remember very much about the alpha groups. Uh, Because, I'm going to be honest, the workload hit me kind of like a sack of bricks. I was homeschooled, so all the emphasis was put more onto studying your field and what you're good at and, like, honing that craft. Whereas here, you're hitting all the major subjects like you would in public school. Although, I'd never been in public school before. So it was kind of like a shock to the system. But uh, I do remember going to clean out this one uh, lady's uh, yard during alpha groups, and she was a very nice lady. Um, and I was training out this pond with, um, with one of those, those nets, and I was very bad at it. And it took me like 45 minutes to strain like this tiny like five by five pond out of all the algae. It was hilarious. I was terrible at it. But I, 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 don't, I don't think I enjoyed it back then, but looking back on it, I, I probably would do it again. It was, I, I only have good memories. Like, it might be selective memory, but it was cool. It, it was very cool. And I do remember a leader of the Alpha Group, uh, Timothy, uh, was a very cool guy, very dependable. If you need something done, it, you, like, if you need help on something, go ask Timothy for help. He'll help you. It's, it's cool. Was there anyone that you met in your Alpha Group that you actually became friends with on campus? Oh, I actually met Ryan here. <laughs> Uh, in the Alpha group. <laughs> Dang right. Uh, yeah, I did. Uh, so me and him just kind of like clicked, just like that. And we have very... I'm a film student, so I like to talk about movies. Let's just say that me and him don't exactly agree about movies all the time. Well, like, at all. So that's a lot of conversation fodder. Um, and we're both very... We're both into athletic... Well, I'm, I'm not on the athletics program, but I really like to go out and exercise, play basketball, things like that. I was pretty bad at basketball starting the semester. Uh, me and him just went out, played a ton of basketball, and that was very cool. Um, and I'm just looking forward to seeing where like, the rest of this college experience goes because it's been special so far, and I'm very glad I came to you. Yeah, it has definitely been a special experience so far. So moving on from that, was there any class or 
a couple of classes that you that really stuck with you in your first semester and even in your second semester? Oh boy. <laughs> so I'm just gonna talk about perspectives on literature here for just a second. So it was a literature class I was taking the first year, and I was decently good at literature throughout college. Uh, excuse me, high school. I liked to read, I liked to write, things like that. I still do. And I walked into this Perspectives on Literature class the first day, and it was uh, taught by this guy named Dr. Martin, Do Dr. Martin, Dr. Todd Martin. And he was terrifying the first day. Yeah. And so I went back to my dorm thinking, who is this guy? And so I looked up, why is my teacher scaring me the first day of school? And it said, hey, it's a scare tactic, most likely. And I was like, okay. 75, 25, that he's a nice guy. And so I went back to the next t class, and he's, he's a nice guy. But I do remember a couple, <laughs> uh, there was one time in the class where I actually had started to doze off because I had not gotten like any sleep the night before. I don't think I was staying up late doing dumb things like arguing about movies again. And I was dozing off. I can't remember what I was thinking about. I think it was like a, a song of some kind. And I was like drifting off into like La La Land. And then all of a sudden, I just hear, Daniel! <laughs> and I was terrified. Because I, I was like, my head was like shot up like that, and I see everyone like looking at me. And it turns out that he was like mad at someone else named Daniel. But that was like the most terrifying five seconds of my life. I will never forget that. Like, my life flashed before my eyes right then. But it was a very cool class. And I got, I got a decent grade. Uh, my grade started out horribly in that class, but I worked to improve. And I think I got like a C, uh, ended the class with like a C plus which was a passing grade, and it kept my, my scholarship, uh, my GPA up high enough to keep my scholarship, so that was uh, very satisfying. Awesome. Was there any other class in the first semester that you liked, like our Intro to DMA class or anything like that? Oh, yeah. I got to go with anything film-related. Uh, was awesome. Uh, production 1 and Intro to Digital Media Arts. Um, uh, Dr. Lance Clark is... A very cool guy. I don't think he taught those classes, but he was constantly like checking on us uh, in the classes, and he he's a very supportive guy. And he, I want to be like that man when I'm older. Like I swear, he's just such a cool guy. And he just pushed me to succeed in these classes, to dedicate myself to learning about these things, about these things in film, well, to push myself farther. Because the instant you stop, it's the instant you think you know everything, is the moment you stop learning. And I'd learned a lot. Like, I'd been kind of hit the brick wall in high school trying to learn how to write. So I just went online and I was like, okay, I'm going to study and study and watch videos. And I watched hours of footage uh, on how to, like, make a movie better. And I think that's literally where, that's where I, how, a big part of where I got today. But that taught me the why of filmmaking. This taught me the how, and the how is very important. So I came here to the DMA student, uh, excuse me, the DMA building for the first time uh, after visiting, of course. And the classes were just wonderful. Like I can't, I can't, I can't overstate how good uh, the teachers were to us. Like uh, as students, they they truly wanted to see us succeed, and it was very, it was very refreshing. Whereas I've heard in big universities, I've heard some horror stories about teachers who honestly don't really care about the students, and it's a little bit sad to me to hear stories like that because here we're taught so well uh, by these DMA teachers, and it's just fantastic. Okay, yeah, I agree. Teachers are great. Um, have been a positive experience so far here at HU for me as well. Was there a project from any of those classes that the teachers gave you that you remember <laughs> and or failed at? Oh, my goodness. All right, all right, all right. So I actually got a couple. I, I, where, where to start? Um, so there was one time we were trying to shoot a stop motion project, and I started writing this whole script, so I dragged Ryan, another guy named Adrian, uh, how to shoot this thing. It did not go well. No, it did not. That, that was like one of the, uh, probably the hardest a project has ever bombed for me while filming. <laughs> oh my goodness. I still get chills. Well, not chills from that, but just like, ugh, moment. I'm just thinking about how badly we did that night. And I just planned badly. But I we went back to the drawing board, literally went back to the drawing board and did um, a, white, a whiteboard stop motion. And that ended up being the final project. And it was very good, definitely for the time constraints we had after wasting all yeah. that time doing something that my, uh, my uh, egotistical self, well, not egotistical, but I shoot high when I'm doing something. I don't do anything halfway when it comes to film. And this was not an exception. I think I aimed a little bit too high. Yeah. Um, was there a project that you did that 
that went well that you really enjoyed? Oh, yeah. So we were shooting a freshman film. Uh, I got assigned to uh, this one freshman film called It Stands Still with a guy named Mason Hislop. He's a cool guy. And I remember it was freezing cold outside, and I'm a Georgia kid, so I'm not used to this. Like, 100-degree weather, I'm fine with. But you throw me into the 30s and 20s, like, no can do, no can do. So it was freezing the entire time we were filming. But it was just cool. And I was the editor, so I was involved in the acting crew as well as the editing process. And so I, <laughs> so the, the, the film was called It Stands Still. It was about, like, a person who gets, like, uh, followed by, like, this apparition, like, this thing that's standing still, and I was the thing that was standing still. So that was cool. The editing process was very nice. So it was a lot, and I did, like... I can't remember how many cuts it was. It was like nine or ten cuts, but once I was done, it felt awesome. It was very satisfying. Yeah, I, I heard about that film, and I heard that it was pretty great. So what is it about being part of DMA and being classified as a DMA student that you like so much? Uh, what I like about being classified as a DMA student? So I'm just going to say that I really like the DMA. I, I've already said I really like the DMA program here, but that's because I'm kind of the odd man out a lot of the time. I don't think like other people, and that's awesome sometimes, and it's really frustrating at other times. But here, like, uh, I'm able to channel my, like, my, my, uh, my train of thought into something that I know what I'm doing, kind of know what I'm doing here. So I'm not completely like lost and just like my, wandering around aimlessly trying to figure out, uh, where, what about this equation? Uh, how do I get this equation to do that? How do I get this thing over here in this Excel spreadsheet? I can just look at the script and I can start writing. I can storyboard. I can write. Then I can shoot. And it's very much up my alley. And it's teaching me skills that I'll need in the future, but it's also like building on things that I already like have an idea of what I'm doing. So it's very refreshing. It's very, it's, it's very encouraging to be able to know that you can get something done and that you're, I would like to say, competent at doing it. So being part of DMA with other students, how has that been? Oh, the students are awesome. Uh, we are all, I can definitely say, we, we were not, we're not uh, like math students. We are not, we're not, we're not, the, so we are definitely the, the students that are, would be perceived as we're very different. We, th we don't think the same way. We do things our own way. And so being around all these other people who think the same way I do and have the same train of thought, it's just very cool, and I'm able to just sit down and start talking or storyboarding or anything, and all these other people are just like, wow, I, li I like this. I like working with you, and I can say, I cool, I like working with you because we think the same way. We want to accomplish the same goals, and it's just very cool to see people that I, I didn't know a bunch of people who were into film back in Georgia, but here is just very cool, very cool. So here at HU, we're given many opportunities like chapel, UCO, floor worship, and even things like D groups. How does being a DMA student and given opportunities to work on those to help other kids grow their faith help grow your faith as well? So I, know, I look around, and I notice there's a lot of secular areas in film, and I, I kind of want to change that, but I'm not going to go too deep into that. I want to stick closer to campus. Just learning how to kind of ground yourself. Like I've been thinking uh, the past few weeks actually on how to uh, kind of r rationalize like what films I can watch as a Christian and what films I can't. Because I watch a lot of movies. Uh, as a DMA student I watch movie after movie after movie trying to hone my craft. So it's kind of, but there are some films that I just can't watch and it's been interesting to try and figure out like which films I uh, on which films I'll watch and which films I can't let myself watch. That's just been an interesting experiment. Thank you, Daniel, for joining me on this episode of Rooted, and thank you for listening. Make sure you subscribe to Rooted on iTunes, Google Play, and Spotify. And remember, you can listen to Forrester Radio over the air in Huntington on 105.5 WQHU or stream us anytime, anywhere on ForresterRadio.com. Stay Rooted.